Okay, so welcome to this session of PhD Symposium. So we have three talks. Uh, we already have three authors available online, so that's great. And so the first talk will be given by Elisaveta Sahun, right? If right, right. And, okay. uh, and and the talk will be on application of intellectual integrated multi-criteria load optimization mode in the aircraft load planning process. So um, the stage is yours. Please go ahead. Okay. So I'm going to start the demonstration. Mm -hmm. One second, please. And this is recorded, right? Is it correct? Just while you're yeah, preparing. Yes. Okay. That's right. Good and good. Okay. So, uh, Good afternoon, dear participants, dear colleagues. I'm going to uh, to speak about the application of the intellectual multi-criteria load optimization model in an era of aircraft load planning. So optimization of cargo loading operations plays a significant role in the stable growth and development of air companies. Uh, aircraft ground service the handling service is a key part of providing air safety on the ground within flight schedule time requirements neglecting of the air safety requirements maintaining the ground handling procedures may lead to accidents that are classified as aircraft accidents or ground damages as you can see from the slide such conditions cause flight delays also loss of operating costs of the air carrier and even people's injuries and death. Accidents which happen during the handling process have a substantial impact on the aircraft's safe utilization that raises the necessity to develop some new aircraft optimal load planning methods, which can increase the air safety rates and avoid aircraft accidents with civil aircrafts and influence on the aircraft operations effectiveness and also marketability of the air cargo carrier. So currently, due to the level of competitiveness of air carriers, the majority are searching for some instruments to provide more effective payload utilization for increasing the level of their revenue, fuel, and other operating costs optimization. So the scientific attempts in arranging the optimal decisions are usually limited by the center of mass envelope and maximum allowed payload. Uh, searching for the scientific approaches towards aircraft load and optimization, it was determined that the term load optimization can be used for typically different decisions that are made during the planning process. So the following research results can be substantial for the airline planning staff, ground dispatchers or load masters, and also for careers operational planning. Uh, the algorithm was developed for the ramp cargo aircraft as there is no such a problem for loading on a multi-lag route for the aircrafts that are equipped with an apparel. So the cargo aircraft IL-76T, uh, AN-24, AN-26 and AN-22 uh, were used for data with the graphs of the final center of mass assignment. The graph of IL-76 T was chosen here as a visualized example in Blender 3D modeling. For optimizing the aircraft loading process, uh, we should make sure not just about the limits and order that should not interfere with the general aircraft physical limitations, but also to make sure that the payload does not exceed the load restrictions for the single load section of this aircraft on the slide. Uh, these restrictions were calculated on the basis of the Flight Operations Manual of IL-76 Appendix 3 and were added to the General Aircraft Load Planning Algorithm. Uh, these aircraft, IL-76, uh, these cargo bay is divided into 15 groups. They're called sections, if you see on the figure. Uh, each section corresponds to its area that is defined with the compartment's length and the finite set of fuselage bulkheads. So on this slide, the scientific attempt in load optimization was undertaken by a situational task that 
complies with the real-life aircraft operation process. The main parameters of the algorithm are shown on this table. So if we uh, see on the slide, um, I will clarify the case. There is a simple multiple leg route that consists of three points. The case one from A to B, case two from B to C, and case three from, from A to C. So each leg has its own planned payload and a predefined unloading order according to its priority. So the ramp cargo aircraft, this case is IL-76, is loaded with different types of ULD, unit load devices. These are containers or pallets or whatever that follow the route from A to C by passing the one point B. That's why it is called multi-leg criteria and multi-leg. Leg one belongs to the straight route from A to B, leg two from B to C, and leg C and leg three belongs to the route from A to C crossing the point B. So according to the clarification mentioned on the previous slide, let's suggest that consequently these containers belongs to leg one. So if the requirement is respected, then container dimensions, length, width, and height should be less than aircraft cargo bay dimensions. If those requirements are further respected, then we should check if the container's final weight is less than the weight limits for each group of this section. So in the first section, the group should be loaded all cargo following the final point C. If the section has a space and the actual loaded weight is less than maximum weight for the current section, then we load this section by the next container in the list that follows the same destination. In case if the space is absent or the actual payload of the section is equal to the maximum payload, so we step to the next section. We repeat these steps until the maximum payload of the finite group section will be less or equal to the final weight of the loaded container due to its finite section, and repeat all these steps for other group of sections. So this is the example of the part of pseudocode of the optimization algorithm. This algorithm was formalized in Python script code and was written in Microsoft Visual Studio code space. The following code fragment set presents the variety of cargo sections that are divided into 15 groups with its own dimensional constraints and weight limitations. On the range um, 204 and 216, we can see the input of all cargo sections and their mass parameters the range of the code also contains cargo weight constraints. So here on this slide, we can see the load optimization model. The program implementation of the load planning algorithm was accomplished by the Python code's integration to the program of 3D modeling, Blender version 2.83. Blender is used in the research to model aircraft loading process in uh, real time conditions. Load planning optimization models operate in the following way. Uh, the containers list and its parameters for the load planning are added to the system's database. Such information can be taken from the set of documents for each flight that is being prepared by person responsible for the flight arrangement. This can be flight dispatch or ground dispatch. Uh, the types of containers that are used by the air carrier were adjusted in advance. These are different containers, general one and containers for animals. Uh, the program, with the help of the added aircraft general constraints, these are length winds, the height of the compartment, maximum payload, weight and balance constraints for the finite aircraft section, select the container with the help of the add container command and assign it firstly according to its priority destination with the command bypass. Uh, the program also contains data from the graph of the final center of mass assignment and the aggregate sum of masses, masses correlation. So consequently, container weight distribution is operated strictly due to this graph, so the weight and balance rates will not exceed their boundaries. 
So the figure three demonstrates the priority assignment already with weight and balance satisfied constraints with the help of the by balance command. These are figure three and figure four. If the user of the program sequentially adds the defined times of containers that meet with the destination's priority, the mode, and the arrangement of all recently loaded containers are being changed as it's shown on the figure five. Uh, while adding few containers with the respect towards both criteria, these are priority and balance, the weight of the last loaded container may be within the limits but exceeds the cargo base dimensions as it's shown on the figure six. In such a case, we exclude it from the list and select the common add container, another one that fits both criteria and does not exceed the ramp length. If the program would not accept the following criteria and limits, the load planning process and particular sorting would be done manually, that is more time consuming, especially in real time conditions. And we are going to the research results. The experiment was implemented in the Air Comedy Z Avia cargo air company by the following way. The set of round trip straight and multi leg flights were chosen. It was counted the average loading time of each flight before the model implementation. Afterward, the load optimization model was integrated into the company's load planning system and used by the load planning staff while taking their operational decisions as well. So, if we analyze the experimental data from the table two, uh, we see that most of the time parameters after the model implementations are less than before the experiment. However, some results are remaining the same. For example, the flight Almaty Nukus and Charjo uh, do due to impact of the external conditions, which are the human factor and weather conditions. Um, a histogram of the experimental results during the set of round trip flights is presented on the figure seven. There are three different columns in the histogram. So the blue one defines the experimental loading time before model implementation. The red column shows the modeled loading time modeled in the program. And uh, the last one, the yellow one, represents the experimental loading uh, time after the um, model implementation. An example of uh, multi -lag, multiple lag flight can be a flight of the route charger, Nikus Almaty. The duration of general loading operations after the model implementation was reduced and became 10 minutes less than the model one. For the one lag flight as Russellheim Almaty, for example, the duration of general loading operations became three minutes less than the model one. The parameters can vary due to the cargo specificity. However, if we base on the data in table two, the model demonstrates positive results after implementation. The new practical results are directed to uh, improve the effectiveness and safety of maintaining the handling procedures and intensify the air company aircraft fleet's utilization with reduction of the handling procedures duration. Uh, the practical value of the obtained results is determined with a successful application of the low planning optimization computer model in near company operations. The developed optimization algorithm was presented on the example of IL-76 loading model. And the flights of air company Z Avia demonstrate that the model um, enables to reduce the average loading and loading time on the range of direct flights to 7% less and the multi leg flights to 12 percent so the objective of the load planning optimization lies here in assignment of container groups to minimize the loading time which means the number of handling operations the operation of uh, reloading or unloading with the sequent consequent cutting of the operating cost per flight uh, therefore the python algorithm returns to user uh, the user to the prior action until the previous container from the same root lag will not be loaded. As it is to be loaded according to all compartment constraints, uh, the finite sequence based on the flight data remains the same. 
So with the help of the finite decisions made by the algorithm variance, the load master or the ground dispatch can control the correlation between the container load and indicators and the general aircraft constraints. This enables to sort uh, of an appropriate variant without wasting time. Uh, consequently, it will affect the load operation speed and the aircraft turnaround time. The loading computer model now has restrictions due to the aircraft type. For algorithm operations, the carrier has to operate the ramp cargo aircraft. In the aircraft equipped with an apparel, that decisions will not be feasible. These times have free access to all cargo compartments, and the problem of the loading speed can be solved just with the help of the handling stuff without implementing the program optimization decisions. So also, although the research weaknesses can include the exogenous factors such the, that affect the cargo service time indicators, these can be human factor or weather, weather conditions. So just that cases can mitigate the decision-making time during the flight planning. Thank you for your attention. Elisaveta, thank you very much for your interesting talk. So let's open the stage for discussion. Are there any questions from the audience? So should I open the chat? Mm -hmm. Let's have a look. So I don't see any messages, but I think people can just speak up and ask, um, you know, using voice or, you mm -hmm. know, they can also write messages. If there are no questions, let me perhaps ask, uh, start with my question first. Um, so my understanding is that you came up with a new optimization algorithm, right? Have you mm -hmm. compared it with existing algorithms? Because there should be other solutions, right? And, Definitely. Uh, and uh, you, you, are refer you were referring that it was 7% better than something, but I was not totally sure, you know, what were the, compar the, com you know, the, com uh, the tools or algorithms you compared with? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, the experimental results were in uh, comparison with uh, the results without the implement without the optimization model. So I compared before the flights before. Uh, I chose the set of flights, round trip flights, and, and we counted the uh, the time of loading and unloading operations before uh, the experimental before um, optimization model and after. And this comparison is uh, that sometimes some multi-lag routes uh, are uh, less on 12% than before the implementation. I mean, quick, quicker. Uh, the loading unloading operations are quicker on 12%, uh, and the uh, direct flights on 7%. Uh, of course, I uh, searched for the other models and uh, for the other variants, but they are usually limited by the uh, the center of gravity envelope. Uh, that's why they're a little bit, um, uh, they have such borders uh, that cannot be uh, searched for now. Uh, here I uh, searched for both criteria. So uh, here you can uh, optimize by path and by center of mass. By But the previous researchers, they uh, tried to to make an optimization by just for the one criteria. And also I searched for the models that uh, they they were eager to optimize, uh, uh, in eager to save uh, some costs. Uh, I was not searched, uh, that was not my goal. My goal was to reduce time, not to, to save costs. Mm. So, that's obvious that if you reduce the time of handling operations, you will, um, uh, you will intensify the turnaround uh, time. So that was my goal. Good, good. And um, I wonder, you know, when you, when you talk about optimization, you know, quite often it's important to analyze complexity, you know, time complexity, you know, okay, how difficult it is for you to get this, you know, um, optimal solution or like at least better solution. Can you, can you perhaps elaborate on this a bit? Uh, uh, do you mean the, the time of... Um... Uh, how much does the uh, optimization model work? Yes. yes exactly. the, okay, I got it. Uh, yes, we che we checked it. Uh, actually, I didn't mention it in the article, uh, but um, uh, we uh, checked that the de the decision with the this program is less than uh, the decision without the optimization model because. Uh, Normally, the ground dispatch uh, counts manually 
uh, and um, sometimes uh, there should be such uh, difficult decisions and last minute cargo when you cannot um, uh, you cannot predict this cargo and that's why this program uh, helps uh, to fasten to, to make this pr process faster just in the in the process when you have these uh, last minute cargo and you have to to put a decision quite very quickly in just in in uh, 10 or 15 minutes so that is the motto that uh, really makes it better and uh, faster good good no that that sounds good uh, other perhaps other people have some questions any other questions so otherwise let's um, thank elizabeth again for her talk thank you very much thank you for your attention and let's move on to the uh, second talk in the session which will be given by victor sobol and the talk will be enhanced uh, worse model proposal for advancing reasoning consistency based on probabilistically bounded staleness Okay, so uh, please go ahead. Um, yeah. Hello, let me share my screen. So is it uh, visible right now? Uh, I don't see anything. Not bad. Yeah, now something is going on. Perfect, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Good, I see awesome. it now. Yeah, great. Uh, hello again, dear colleagues. Uh, my name is Victor. I am a PhD student at Karazian National University. Uh, yeah. During my presentation, I will talk about bounding eventual consistency in uh, partial quorum systems. Uh, the talk is structured uh, the next way. At uh, first, I will give a brief overview of what eventual consistency is and how it is employed in uh, partial quorum data stores. Uh, then I'll cover PBS theory, the main pillar my contribution is based on. And next, my actual contribution will be described together with conducted experiments to verify its decency. After the potential usages together with possible next steps and main conclusion will be shown. Uh, so first, what is eventual consistency? As well-known uh, CAP theorem states, that it is impossible to provide consistency of data alongside the availability during the partition network. However, with the ability to employ strong consistency guarantees, most of the time, practitioners are not able to trade off availability. Numerous researchers show that availability drop leads to significant revenue loss. Eventual consistency is used as a consistency model to describe system behavior where no guarantees about staleness of data can be made. Research related to bounding and undefined time frame is ongoing and very important to practitioners. Uh, so this work is dedicated to studying boundaries of eventual consistency for exactly partial quorum systems. Uh, so the simplified logic of data stores employing quorum techniques. When the write operation uh, from the client arrives at one of the members of the data store system, the response returned back to the client only after a particular number of members acknowledge this operation, typically called write quorum. The same logic applies to read operation with a possibly different number of members required to return or acknowledge data. This is called read quorum. In quorum systems, sequential consistency is guaranteed when read and write quorum intersect with each other. So when uh, amount of uh, the size of read quorum plus size of write, uh, write quorum is more than amount of uh, replicas storing the data. Uh, partial quorums where amount of read and write, uh, where the size of read nodes plus size of write nodes is less or equal than amount of replicas storing a particular piece of data. Uh, so this uh, picture illustrates uh, how does it work. On, on the left side, we can see that when a write actor writes some value, he gets response only after it's written to two instances. And when read actor tries to read a value, he as well gets response only after the value is returned from two instances. And because those quorums are intersecting with each other, then the read actor will uh, be given up to date value. And on left side, oh, oh, oh sorry, on the right picture, with non strict quorum, even the, when the write operation is complete, read operation may still return stale data if read 
if read quorum consists of instances known intersecting with write quorum ones. A uh, represented contribution is aimed to provide an improved approach for modeling boundaries of eventual consistency in distributed data store with partial quorum approach to handle read and write operations. The improvements are based on probabilistically bounded statements. Uh, so probabilis probabilistically bounded statements of PDS, so PDS divisibility, models the probability of stale data item being returned from the read operation, which is initiated after T time units passed since Write, write, write request completion. The simulation VARS model uses probability distributions to simulate the next steps after the request arrived from a client to one of the nodes of the data store, namely coordinator. Uh, so, and VARS model consists of four different latency distribution. Two distribution for a write operation latency to reach replica node and get back a response, and two similar distributions for read operations to reach a node and get a response back. Uh, the picture on the slide illustrates VARS model. For a particular replica to return stale data, the shown condition must be satisfied. For the coordinator to return stale data as an overall response, the first R responses for each operation must be received from re replicas satisfying the aforementioned condition. VARS model is good as it considers the effect of message sending, delays, and reception. Yeah, as can be seen, uh, because we have two different uh, latency distribution, and one coordinator sends multiple requests uh, to different replicas, some replica may uh, get the data before earlier than the others, but may uh, when they send response back to coordinator, it may take much longer time comparing to other replicas. That's example of uh, how this model includes packet network packet delays and other network anomalies. Uh, so my enhancement proposal, uh, because original model does not include query processing time as well as client side delay, and the motivation to include processing time can be drawn from a well-known distributed database Cassandra usage practices, such as query first approach. As the requirements are constantly changing, hence the query needs may be changed as well and data store can run into performance issues that are not encountered in the original model. The client side delays are important as well, as the latency between the client and coordinator, especially considering geographically distributed setups, can vary significantly, hence impacting observed staleness from client side perspective. Um, yeah. So parameters to be included uh, to a model, to distribution for read and write query processing time, and two distribution for client coordinator request and response latency. Uh, mm -hmm. The new flow can be seen on a slide where the client contacts coordinator and then the coordinator contacts replicas with replicas processing time accounted. So that's a replica processing time for read and write operation. It depends on the design, read and write operation may take totally different time for some databases. Write operation are faster for some read operation are faster. And from client as well, because client can be located in totally different continent. Uh, updated staleness condition now includes uh, client side delays as well as query processing time. So VT is the time where client received the response uh, plus uh, seconds after, that's what says for PBS T visibility, so after how much time units client can see the updated results. And uh, here we encounter the whole flow of the request from client to coordinator to replica and for replica processing read request. Uh, how the proposition was verified? Validation of the model was done as a comparison of the result from original and enhanced model simulation by Monte Carlo method to the data obtained from the run of geographically distributed Cassandra cluster. Exponential distribution was taken for the network latencies and primary motivation was wide usage of this kind in different network latency modeling tasks, as well as usage by authors of the original model for their simulations. The client application was located in Minsk and Cassandra cluster was deployed in Singapore and Frankfurt by using public cloud vendor DigitalOcean. That's, uh, basic structure of experiment setup. Uh, the most interesting experiment settings 
uh, it's worth uh, noting that all of those quorums are partial and some of them are cross data center distributed. Uh, the results obtained uh, after simulation uh, can, can be is, is shown on the slide. This uh, roots mean square error shown for enhanced and original model uh, for different setups. Uh, such a big difference uh, explains that original model does not include uh, client side delays and when client from Minsk uh, reaches Singapore server and sometimes Singapore server for quorum must reach Frankfurt, then uh, response must be returned back and then back to Minsk, then obviously yeah, it takes a lot of time. Uh, the graph of T visibility distribution is shown uh, as can be seen sometimes T visibility even if is even negative for Singapore. That happens again during the network delays for packets traveling around the world. Uh, again about the case from Singapore, Frankfurt and back. And when uh, data is stored in both PC, uh, the graph looks notably different. Uh, potential usages and the next steps. Uh, as the model relies on network latency distribution, then the cons consistency impact of all the latency optimization can be conveniently analyzed as a proposed enhancement before implementing it. Cloud provider cost optimization is a very broad topic, but as the main parts of the data store are included in the model, uh, such as networks, disks, uh, then network disks and instant types can be chosen with respect to the desired consistency levels. The model by itself surely has room for development, as in, is in current setup, load of data store was not analyzed and considering the widespread of use of commodity hardware, resource utilization and limits can be included in future studies. However, a too complicated model isn't desired. Um, that's time for conclusion. Uh, the presented analysis of an enhancement model is sufficient enough to conclude that from the client side perspective, proposed model has clear advantages. Uh, that's all from my talk and I will be happy to answer all the questions. Victor, thank you very much for your talk. Um, any uh, any questions from the audience? Then perhaps I could ask a question, Victor. As I understand, so you mentioned some uh, information about how you tested this, and you deployed it on some external infrastructure. If I understand correctly, right? You said like yeah, Singapore, yeah. right? Can you elaborate a bit, you know, how you did, and you know what exactly happened there? Uh, yeah. So I used the public cloud vendor provider Digital Ocean. It's uh, a bit smaller provider than uh, Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud, but they have some discounts for, for new customers. That was my primary reason for <laughs> to, to choose them. Uh, yes, and basically uh, I run there are multiple instances, 20 instances, 10 in Singapore and 10 in uh, uh, Frankfurt uh, using uh, the public capabilities. And then uh, I wrote uh, a script, yeah, it can be called a script, uh, which set up a cluster, Cassandra cluster. It's basically connects to every node uh, in both data centers and uh, installs all the needed software and run Cassandra cluster with all the settings to, to form a cluster so nodes are aware of each other. And uh, yeah, then I use Cassandra uh, database as uh, yeah, as just regular data database. I, con I can connect to any instance because Cassandra by itself is masterless database so I can make a write request to any instance, any of uh, this instance can be one of the replica of data I am writing, writing for, or it can be just a coordinator. Uh, so from my local laptop, I wrote a program which uh, in a loop basically sends a write request and a, re a read request in another process and checks time uh, when the write request was uh, the acknowledge of write request was received and as well it logs time when the read request was sent and read request was received and what data uh, were received. As uh, for version uh, me measurement, I uh, write request was uh, just incrementing particular value on particular col column in Cassandra. So I always knew which version, uh, like how many versions before this current was written and, and so that's about the experimentation. Okay. Was it clear enough or you yeah, need more details? 
Yeah, yeah. But and in on this, you know, on on this cloud system, you can pick servers and where you where they are, right? Because you can yeah, say yeah, this uh, is in I... Singapore and so on, right? Yeah, yeah, I can. I can. Okay, interesting. Okay. Yeah, because kind of initially I asked that because I was wondering, you know, typically if one thinks about cloud solutions, you would think about AWS, right? And I was like yeah. wondering why you didn't use it, but I think you answered that, right? Sure. Kind of, there were some cost <laughs> considerations, yeah. Uh, there is, yeah, they give you $100 credit for, for a new customer. So it's nothing if you're some kind of company which burns thousands of dollars per day, but if you're basically like a researcher who needs just 20 instances for a couple of hours, uh, than uh, enough, so it was basically for free. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. No, that totally makes sense. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Victor, for I think you have given a detailed answer. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, perhaps any questions from the audience? Good. So if we don't have any questions, then uh, we have our last speaker, Sergey, and um, Sergey will be talking about random flat graph drawing generation algorithms for PCB tracing program testing. So the stage is yours. Please go ahead. Uh, good, good afternoon. <coughs> Are you hearing me? Do you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I run my presentation. Um, wait a minute. <clears throat> um, now, <clears throat> my name is Sergey Zgadov, and topic of my presentation is a random flat graph drawing generation algorithm for tested printed circuit board tracing software. Uh, now I'll touch on the following topics. How topological tracing of printed circuit board algorithm transform the data? What problem does appear when we want to debug or build PCB tracing algorithm implementation? So, a problem and solution uh, that could be uh, used will be presented. And uh, so, uh, the solution is certainly random graph generation that data sets. Uh, what happens while topological tracing uh, alg uh, <coughs> alg algorithm work? Uh, al algorithm of our routing play a great role in modern engineering uh, of uh, electronic devices. Uh, last time, a big attention paid to topological routing that use information about schematic top topology. So we begin with uh, schematic uh, uh, sch schematic of uh, some electronic device. Then we must uh, build connection deeper graph. Uh, schematic tunes to connection deeper graph describes as a set of relation between electric parts and conductors. So, it, so there is a, a number of uh, da data that represent topological graph drawing. The next stage is, is planarization. Because of conductors might not cross and visit each other, planar parts of schematics would be extracted. The result of the stage is topological drawing. Topological drawing is not a picture yet. Logical drawing is a list of rotation uh, that in, in, in Euclid describes planar graph with relative vertices position. And only after this, we can begin graph embedding and geometrical construction on PCB. This briefly um, describes, roughly, roughly describes uh, what do uh, automatic tracing programs. On these slides, uh, every row shows this transform. Uh, on the left, you see schematic. Uh, then uh, you see deeper graph. 
but uh, you must know that this the stage isn't picture this is number of uh, uh, numerical relations then uh, I noticed that in planarization uh, geometrization stage uh, used uh, additional constructors uh, highlighted by red fictive edge are added this is done to eliminate connectivity regions in graph and simplified work of graph embedding algorithm. So then they will be deleted at the next stage. Finally, you can, tr can see traced PCB. Now we speak about uh, these stages. Uh, working uh, on algorithm on graphs, uh, concerned as this uh, printed board circuit tracing. Uh, I concerned these two stage, the, this, this, this stage of algorithm PCB, of, of PCB tracing algorithm are very important. And yes, they are most difficult. Uh, one can be sure on the, on the implementation. On this stage, uh, numbers that represent adjustancy matrix of um, connections <clears throat> turn to graph embeddings from left to right. So, uh, So, so, так, the, the, the let, uh, one have to be sure in this implementation. This is a good idea to obtain a set of data, including planar graph description with specific properties, and it's embedding on the plan. It seems very easy when number of verticals is small. One can make... Uh, by own hands and pen. You can see what we want to uh, use to be sure that uh, previous stage, uh, shown in the previous slide, uh, work properly. Uh, it seems very easy with number of vertices is small. One can make it by own hands and pen. But what about big numbers of graph vertices? Uh, can you build topological representation when number of vertices uh, is about 100 or 200 or thousands? It's very hard. We, no, well, well, we want to generate a density matrix and what? Use the same algorithm that we implement to embed it into plane? It, it's not correct. That's why uh, I um, have an idea to obtain planar graph and it's flat drawn simultaneously. Uh, I uh, search uh, some instruments in um, internet and uh, works uh, and uh, had to provide um, all my own algorithm of left gradual generation lays on idea that any triangulation is inherently flat graph drawing so if uh, one delete some edge, the result will be also a flat graph. Main steps of pro um, my algorithm are, uh, first, uh, we generate random points distributed on plane. Then we provide triangulation and simultaneously create, create the graph matrix. Then we cyclically deletion sum of uh, edges, but uh, we must uh, delete uh, edges with uh, uh, checking some rules. Uh, 
let uh, let quantity of vertices will be n uh, then generated given arrays on space and random points for example uh, 50 as uh, I shown in this picture let use any algorithm of triangulation to build edges I uh, find uh, some nice algorithm of triangulation uh, I call it uh, scan line algorithm algorithm uh, it, it's quite uh, quick uh, about uh, n logarithm uh, n uh, complexity <clears throat> um, so at this stage we also built an adjacency matrix to remember edges thus uh, we built random algorithm triangulation a random graph structures usually triangulation gives maximal quantity of triangle faces but stop in this stage is quite trivial so is random graph but it isn't a good uh, idea to stop this if we want to generate really uh, random non-trivial graph we would make some more steps I think a random deletion of edge could help us this deal. Okay, moment is that we also modify adjusting the matrix when modify list of edge. At the at stage of deletion, we must check before delete um, edge. If we do not want to get three or four rest on connected graph. So it is check if uh, if age to be deleted is not bridge articulation uh, if uh, uh, age edges uh, vertices isn't articulation points and uh, if if we and we do, must uh, check uh, if deletion of uh, age, the age um, don't break chains uh, this, this uh, <clears throat> uh, it, it's quite uh, simple to check first uh, to first condition with depth first search from each of age uh, when the first search uh, if del delete if age is deleted uh, deep first search stops in uh, one region of connectivity and don't uh, reach other uh, connectivity region. Uh, so uh, the case of uh, handing edge and break or breaking chain made uh, check it um, by uh, checking local valence of vertex. As you see, is this uh, external case valency of uh, edges local valency of uh, edges uh, vertex equal to two so we cannot uh, delete uh, uh, edge if local vertexes of of his of, of it uh, it's uh, of valency of local Local well, excuse me. Uh, local uh, valency is is uh, less than three. Finally, we have a result of deletion. Uh, finally, we result of deletion. Uh, random uh, flat graph, uh, but uh, the specific of this method is that that we uh, obtain uh, embedding in these coordinates of uh, uh, vertexes and uh, adjusting the matrix uh, adjusting the matrix uh, we 
can set the quantity of vertex deletion tries uh, and save result uh, as numerical representation also. Uh, on these ideas, I built uh, implementation of uh, the algorithm uh, as a Windows application. Here is an interface of demo version uh, of for benchmarking and stage demonstration. Uh, the results of uh, work uh, of this program I used uh, as uh, illustration on previous slides. Uh, what uh, one can set uh quantity of vertex and uh, portion of uh, the vertex edges to be deleted uh, then we can generate a random graph and uh, uh, save a picture and numerical representation So next uh, next uh, slide uh, I want to show you samples uh, with uh, 100 uh, vertices being generated by this program and uh, sample of the random graph with one of 100. 1,000 uh, uh, vertices. Uh, you see this, uh, this graph uh, uh, graphs has one significant properties for my task. Uh, they almost uh, have cycles and uh, these uh, graphs is uh, suitable to test tracing algorithm because uh, tracing algorithm, most of these algorithm, for example, uh, method of threads, uh, like uh, structures, uh, consist of cycles. Uh, so, triangulation stage and main cycle stages was benchmarked and uh, experimental, uh, experimental, uh, <coughs> with experimental, <coughs> well, experiment, uh, numerical experiments, uh, I find that uh, perfor performance of my algorithm uh, is uh, quadratic to to and uh, the the main the performance of uh, main algorithm is uh, highlighted by red and performance of triangulation time uh, quasi quasi linear. Um, it's uh, I I think I find uh, not bad uh, triangulation algorithm. Uh, so. Conclusion. We obtain algorithm and make software generate random graph survey that. We can adjust and see uh, or build rotation list on the, and random graph drawing simultaneously. We controlling the graph during generation. This uh, feature is uh, uh, very significant for me because uh, in the internet uh, and in science works uh, I find many ideas about random graph generation not, but I can control generation of my uh, test, uh, test data sets so 
uh, the result I have, I have presented now. Uh, the, the graph is planar, planar with, without bridges, free vertices. Uh, the graph has one connectivity region. It should, it could be, it could be used in another graph-oriented algorithm. Uh, for example, as test data for planarization program, it uh, quite good performance. Uh, so, uh, thank you for attention. Uh, what, what big questions? Sergey, thank you for your talk. Um, yeah, so we move on to the question session. Are there any questions from the audience? So if there are no, let me actually ask you some questions. So, Sergey, what I wanted to understand better, can you put it a bit into the context, right? Because, you know, most probably there was some preliminary work, right? Or some earlier work in this domain, like, uh, can you relate what you are presenting to the earlier work for us? Uh, I, I, I think I uh, might have to ascend to region of, uh, Using using this of my algorithm, so the, yes, да, yes. No, it, my question was, what was the work that was done before? What was the previous work? Maybe you could compare your work with the work that was done before, so that people understood more the context. This uh, the, this context uh, was uh, algorithm on graphs. Uh, I worked on uh, uh, topology tracing, and uh, uh, I need in uh, generating of uh, uh, da testing data sets that uh, can use in my algorithm. The, my work concern, my work concerned uh, uh, to. Um, Thread methods and graph planarization. So the, what concerned uh, pre works um, of, of, of as uh, others about random graph uh, random graph generation. Uh, so, so I find a very uh, large. Uh, number of random graph generation but uh, they have one problem they generate uh, adjusted matrix or uh, only or then they generate uh, graphs that uh, do not uh, um, meet uh, um, uh, my uh, how, how to say it? Uh, correct requirements requirements <clears throat> so I cannot uh, find uh, the direct analog of uh, my work and that's, and that's why I m uh, make efforts to create my own algorithm to, gener to generate uh, Planar graph and its embedding simultaneously. This is my idea. I generate uh, adjusted the matrix and I generate simultaneously uh, its embedding, uh, the embedding of the graph by, by this matrix. Uh, in other works, uh, um, in, in, uh, another way to realize this is uh, use uh, special embedding algorithm like uh, Tarian liked uh, algorithm uh, or its modification but uh, this means that I um, must uh, do uh, my work twice uh, <clears throat> Okay, so um, thanks for your clarification, Sergey. Are there any further questions from the audience? I think if there are no further questions, we can stop for now, um, right? And then we'll reconvene in, I think, in 30 minutes or something, right? Or 
via a remote connection. And thank you very much for attending this session and um, um, see you in the next session. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.